You know what's great? What's great, Matt? Technology. No, it's terrible. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how you built your entire career. Stone Ages. Where is, where is that? Holy oh man, big fan. Speaking of the Stone Ages, did you know that a lot of the technology that you are using is actually way older than you think? No, I didn't know that. So what exactly is the plan today? You said that there's a game of some variety. Yes. I'm going to give you some pieces of technology okay. that are super common today that you probably think are maybe 10 years old. But I'm going to be mistaken, is my guess. And for every time you are mistaken, Ken gets an additional $500. 500? Yeah, Wait, no, For no. the mystery tech Why budget. Why 500? How many questions are there? There are three. $500? Yes. Well, you're just gonna throw trick questions at me because you just want a better mystery tech budget. I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the way I have it laid out, I'm gonna give you three pieces of technology. Okay. And you'll have multiple choice. You have to pick the decade that this, that this piece of technology oh. was invented. So do I get a shenanigans vote if you try to say that like something is wildly off or like I don't agree with it? Is there some like, do you have no, a mediator because I, No, no, <laughs> because I'm the one, I'm the mediator. I'm the one who's done the research. Well, what if you're wrong, Matt? You're just trying to say like, oh, I'm the mediator. I'm if, the boss. I'm the judge. I'm the jury and I'm the executioner. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I'm saying. But I'm the one who has to pay the, for the mystery tech budget. So. Yeah, that's why it's fun for us and not for you. And so I've, like a good host, set Austin up to fail. All right, so let's play whatever this game is called, starting with question number one. When do you think in-car navigation first was a thing? Can I get some more specificity on the question? Are we saying GPS navigation? Are we saying like grandma with the map and the back seat navigation? Like, what do you mean by that? Something that's built into your vehicle. Is it A, the 1990s, B, the 1930s, C, the 1910s, or D, the 19... <laughs> you don't even have it memorized. 60s. Okay, well, I'm gonna guess it's not the 60s since you forgot that one. Or no, maybe it is the 1960s. I'm just trying to play mind games. I, could, game I right just now. couldn't remember which one I actually already said. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say the tens are probably out because basically no one had cars back then. My inclination is to say the 1960s because that was an era in which there's a lot of really weird like mechanical stuff, like all kinds of things in cars where like we had a lot of the modern conveniences. Sure. But it was done in a very like old school way of like ratchets and clanks and and I actually don't know what I'm talking about. But there, there's a lot of weird stuff there. However, I think that you're about to pull out something really weird. I'm gonna guess the 1930s. Final answer. Final answer is 1930s? Yeah. You are actually correct. Yes! I am really upset by this. Now, to okay. be fair, this is the one I thought you might get because you're a car guy. Okay. So these but. numbers were not just random numbers I threw at a dartboard. In 1910, they did actually have an integrated system. The Baldwin Auto Guide, which was based off of Kodak Film, what? And it attached to the steering column, and it was a map inside with directions, two different things. Whoa. So, like, you know, you turned left, you had to turn the directions then. So the 1930s was from an Italian company. Oh, that looks real. It is real. <laughs> it, it was the Iter Auto. And so it would have what? the map here, and as you're going... It had inc it included some gas stations, some restaurants, some hotels. You got Ken's Hotel. You got Austin's Barbecue. Jimmy's Gas. You loaded these guys up in the in this cartridge, but it connected to the speedometer, and it would what? scroll proportionately as you're driving. What I love about this era is that before there was digital anything. You had to be so old school mechanical, and there were so many weird, so many interesting, so many like ingenious approaches to delivering this kind of tech because you couldn't just throw in a screen and a chip or whatever. Like right. You had to actually develop the pieces of paper and the winding mechanism and the, the cartridges. Like It is so cool, but the most important thing is I was right. I'm impressed that you got the first one. You know, I'm not gonna get cocky here, but I'm feeling good. You do generally get really cocky. I do. You know that about me, which is I think part of the reason why you're gonna try to trick me with these things. You're gonna make something seem really obvious and I'm gonna like, glue to it. See, I remember when we did the hidden camera thing and you totally oh, yeah. tricked me like that. I can learn. So Spotify, you say is, oh, 2011 is when it started. But when do you think streaming music actually became a thing? Okay, I'm gonna need way more specificity on this one. When you say streaming music, we're not talking radio. No, I'm, well, 
I'm gonna say music that you don't own. Okay. That you don't have physically. Yes. That you hear on demand. So if I want to listen to my favorite Justin Bieber song, I can use this service in whatever decade it is to listen to that song pretty much instantly. Not quite that cut and dry, but yes. There's no physical media involved though, right? Like it's not like a mail service where they're sending me like records or something. Correct. It's not a mail service. So is it A, 1900s, B, 1980s, no. C, 1880s, or D, 1920s? Okay, not the 1980s because knowing the way that you're doing research on this, it's not gonna be something normal. It's gonna be something weird. It's gonna be like, like, uh, you get it through the telegraph or something. You like hook up your telegraph machine and it goes like click, 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 click. Are you saying they streamed Morse code to yes. you in music? Yes. I wouldn't put it past you to pull something like that. So I'm gonna throw 1980s out. Okay. The 1880s feels too old because, I mean, the fact that you could even record music was something that, if I recall right, only really became particularly popular and relevant in that that sort of decade, right? If the Well, I guess the mid-1880s or so, something like that. It wasn't very common to record music. It's possible, but recording and streaming feels like a little bit much. So through my powers of deduction, I'm going to guess either the 1900s or the 1920s. I'm going to guess the 1900s final answer. No! Did I get it right? No! Yes! I think I'm right. Yes! Yes! You're two for two. I'm I'm disappointed. Wait, can you explain to me what exactly could you do in the 19 whatevers? So you were you were wrong about the 1880s. Okay. So the device that this guy built, like he started designing it in the 1880s and started building it in the like late 1890s and then finished it in I think 1902. Sorry, 1901. Okay. Just inside. And it was Thaddeus Cahill. It's a great name. Who built the I can't even pronounce it. It's just one it's just one of these old timey words. The Telharmonium. The Telharmonium? T E L mm-hmm. Harmonium. Thanks for spelling it for me. Yeah. <laughs> what so, exactly did this thing do? So the Telharmonium was an organ that converted the music into electrical signals. And then those electrical signals were draw, you know, go through wires and everything Mm -hmm. into a paper cone. So the, the, one of the first loudspeakers, and then that loudspeaker basically was playing into a telephone. And that was being broadcasted technically, even though it's all just one big telephone system to restaurants and hotels and even homes around Manhattan. The organ itself was in like the main area of a concert hall and then the actual device itself, and there's the organ right there. Wow, okay. So it was a 150 key organ. Now you could actually call in and request songs to be played. The reason this didn't take off. (laughs) Oh, okay, go ahead. Again, this is super groundbreaking. But the yeah, problem groundbreaking was, it, because it weighs 800 tons. It, it literally, it literally was groundbreaking. It took up the entire basement of this, <laughs> of this concert hall. Yeah. And this is before like, va- uh, electrical vacuum tubes were invented. So they use these massive electrical uh, dynamos, which required like about the equivalent power of an entire home to run like per hour. All right. I'm, Next item. I'm hoping to stump you with this one. Is this a third and final question? What's your confidence level right now, Matt? Do you think you're gonna stump me or am I gonna go three for three? I think I am gonna stump you. Shoot your shot, my friend. I'm feeling pretty confident right now. When do you think downloading games? Oh, Matthew Ancini. This is a, this is a topic I know a thing or two about. Go ahead. When do you think downloading games was first invented? Was it A, 19... 19- 60s, 1970s, 1980s, or the 1990s. Okay. So I know that both the Genesis as well as I believe the Super Nintendo had a modem component where you actually, specifically in Japan, you could download games to them. And I believe that was either late 80s or early 90s. But I'm assuming we're talking older than that. I'm throwing out 1990s for sure. And I'm Still gonna throw out 1960s. You might throw me a curveball with like some weird, like old military program that they downloaded or something. I don't think so. War Games, it's a great movie. I feel pretty confident that there was some weird thing in the 80s that you could stream games from. I'm gonna say the 1970s. Ah, uh, oh, uh, you were wrong. Yes. When was it? 
You were, you talked yourself out of it. It was in the 1980s. Really? Ah! Uh, but wait, but I thought that like the... 1981, was... the Mattel in television. It was in television. It was 81? 81. I thought that in television was like 79. Maybe in development. No, Matt, it was so <laughs> close. It was the one I should have known. Wait, so it was, yeah, it was some uh, attachment for the Intellivision, it right? It was the play cable, and it wasn't a modem. It was a cartridge that you rented from Mattel. It was $12 a month, so half the cost of a regular game. Yeah. And it plugged in via coax cable. Oh, okay. Not a modem. Yeah, yeah. And you could in theory, download any of their games to the cartridge. Now, it was a super cool concept because you had access to their major titles like Frogger and Pitfall, and I can't believe those are, you know, I'm saying those are A-list titles. It was significantly cheaper, and basically you just rewrote over the cartridge every time you download the yeah. game. They even got like Mickey Mantle to come on and do a like a whole series of commercials. The Intellivision was big. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was huge. This is a really well thought out game. I'm still happy with two out of three, especially considering that two out of three were definitely guesses and only one of them I felt confident in, and I was wrong about that one. So congratulations. So what I figured out for next time is I need to make these way harder. No, 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 no. Pinpoint the year. No, how the dare decade. you? How dare you? So I'm never gonna get the. It's just gonna be a one out of four chance because I'm just gonna guess. The decade is the way we should do this. Okay. So if you have a challenge you think I should issue, Austin, let me know in the comments. And I'm gonna say well done. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to this extra $500 from Mystery Tech. Like it could've been a whole lot worse. A whole lot worse. It will be next time.